Now we turn to the investigation of this week's chaos on JetBlue Flight 191. The NTSB has completed its analysis of the cockpit recorder and returned it to the FBI. And joining us now with what investigators are looking for is Mark Rosenker, a former chairman of the NTSB and CBS News aviation safety analyst. And great to have you with us, Mark. Always love your insights on topics like these. Good to be with you this morning, Rebecca. So what are we looking for? What is the NTSB and the FBI looking for in these tapes? The cockpit voice recorder is an excellent tool to be able to understand exactly what happened either in an incident or an accident. These are the recordings, of the actual conversations and the sounds on the flight deck. And there's about two hours here from a four hour time span. Why just the two hours of footage? Well, actually, the minimum requirement would be 30 minutes and that's in the old boxes. So the newer boxes are up to two hours. That's a good thing. Normally, we're, we're not looking at these kinds of events at the NTSB. They're normally, unfortunately, looking at these boxes after a catastrophic accident mm. has occurred. And normally, the, the two-hour window is enough. Here, it would have been a lot nicer, if you will, to be able to hear the exact conversations it, at the beginning of this flight. But the two hours should be enough for them to get a good sense of uh, what was going on mm -hmm. on that flight deck, how the first officer performed, the unusual behavior of the captain, all of those things will be analyzed by the FBI and the NTSB. Does it make a difference? Because we've heard these reports that maybe he was pulling levers. He was also saying things. Does it make a difference whether you can hear actions, items like he's actually pulling the levers versus simply stating things like this plane is going to go down, things like that? You will hear it all. You will hear noises in the cockpit. You will hear him flip switches. You will uh, hear the any, any bumps, any type of... Uh, instrument warning systems if any went off at that point but you'll certainly hear the discussions between the two pilots and also the uh, the departure if you will from the flight deck and then his attempt to get back in and the banging on that door mm -hmm. and, and this is still a criminal case or this is a criminal case i should say the fbi remains involved here who's taking the lead at this point the ntsb or the fbi the fbi will lead this investigation uh, with assistance by the NTSB. And the reason why the FBI is really in charge is because charges have been uh, levied against this man, and as a result of that, there are criminal actions that need to be investigated. So the NTSB will provide as much support as they possibly can. You bring up the fact that this is sort of new territory for the NTSB, also for the FBI, because in most of these cases, unfortunately, we're dealing with them after a crash. Where, where lives have been lost. How does that, a, a, as a result, change the stakes here and the potential outcome here? Well, because it's a criminal case, uh, the FBI will be doing a very thorough investigation. Uh, the reality of life is this is so unique, mm -hmm. so unusual. Pilots don't do this. We see 30,000 operations every day in the United States, landings and takeoffs, without incident, mm -hmm. without accident, with tremendous professionalism. This was an extraordinary issue, and uh, the, it's a learning moment, clearly, for uh, the NTSB, the FAA, the companies. We're going to understand a lot more about what perhaps uh, moved this individual to, to have this kind of behavior, mm -hmm. but uh, clearly uh, it was an unfortunate situation that turned out brilliantly because of the performance of the, the first officer, right. the cabin crew, mm -hmm. and, of course, the great support of the passengers the people. that came in. Mark Rosengar, thank you so much. We appreciate it. My pleasure.